Welcome today to Green is Good. This is John Shigarian, and we're so honored and excited to have Dr. Neil Drobny, who's not only unbelievable green evangelist, but he's also a good friend. He's the director of the Ohio State campus-wide major, Environment, Economy, Development, and Sustainability. Welcome to Green is Good, Neil Drobny. Thank you, John, very much. Oh, we're so excited to have you on today. And Neil's been kind enough historically to have me come and uh, lecture to one of his great classes. His students are so engaged. You are doing wonderful work. But since I've seen you last in person, Neil, there has been so much evolution in Ohio State. And, um, you know, we're going to get into that. And I just want to say thank you for coming on the show. Well, thanks uh, for having me, John. Oh, no problem at all. You know, let's start with... Um, you know, your journey a little bit, Neil, you're a fascinating man. You've had worn a lot of hats. Can you share a little bit how you got to this great position, in Ohio State, your personal journey? Well, it certainly wasn't a plan. So uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have to follow the opportunities. I, I now realize I went to college, actually, in the 60s, uh, interested in sustainability, but there was no language for that, no courses to take. So the closest I could come was environmental engineering, and then I did consulting in environmental engineering and began to realize a lot of my clients' issues were, uh, you know, rooted in business issues, mainly uh, around the unwise decisions made regarding the use of resources. I learned that uh, a number of business schools were starting to cover this uh, in their courses, so I was able to convince the uh, folks at the uh, Fisher College of Business at all. Ohio State to let me teach a course, and I kind of thought it would just sort of stop there, but uh, it went well, so I got to do it again. Then I got to do a series of courses for undergraduates, which have become especially popular. And then uh, quite recently, within the last year, Ohio State started this new major that John mentioned (laughs) in sustainability. It's a campus-wide major, and after it was all put together, they asked me to be the director of it and to incorporate my business courses into the major, which has become a major differentiator of the major, you know, in terms of what uh, might be available at other schools across the country. And also become, as we've discussed before, very popular. Yeah, yeah, it really has. Oh, well, that's awesome. And uh, we're going to get into that, and we're going to talk more about it and all the accolades you're getting. Go, Go into a little bit. Let's start, you know, where sustainability, you know, where the rubber hits the road, the triple bottom line, people, planet, and profits. Talk a little bit about sustainability and, and business today, and why is the triple bottom line uh, so important? Well, what companies are figuring out is that's uh, a key strategic direction for building shareholder value. Uh, you know, when we see a dumpster sitting outside of a business, what most business owners are beginning to realize that's material we bought, and we're never going to sell and certainly not make a profit on it. And worse yet, we're going to spend again to have it hauled away from us. So if we right. can move away from generating all this waste and the pollution that occurs, it's just going to benefit our business. Got it. And, Got it. Uh, and students have figured that out, and uh, they're selecting companies who have a strong agenda to do, <laughs> do those kind of things as places to work. That's uh, That seems to be where they want to go nowadays, huh? Exactly. Um, you know, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, DNA, cu- you know, c- a company's culture and DNA. Why is it not okay anymore just to do one green or sustainable good thing? Why is it, why is it now becoming more of a holistic issue with regards to companies' adoption of sustainability? Well, it's because we need to uh, incorporate sort of a, a systems mindset when we think about sustainability. Everything's connected to everything else, and you just can't, you know, change the light bulbs or put the copier on default to make two-sided copies. Every function in a business uh, has to work together with all the other functions to pull off this uh, change in culture and change in business practices uh, to de- deliver really uh, significant value. Got it, got it. And, and you know, there's, 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 a, there's a great um, quote uh, with regarding, you know, all the abundance that we have in our nation and how we've almost in many ways historically polluted our way to prosperity. Well, you know, talk a little bit about how can we continue to be a prosperous economy and nation, but also start thinking more and acting better when it comes to 
a sustainable and clean environment. Yeah, well, we have to move as fast as we can into uh, you know, using as much uh, renewable resources as, as we can and quit burning or burying uh, all the non-renewables like we've already uh, we've done so often with our traditional take, make, and waste model. I've heard the numbers or seen numbers that since the Industrial Revolution, we've buried some $750 billion worth of materials uh, and landfills. And I know CEOs, when they think about that in their own companies, they sort of smack their forehead and say, gee, if we could have figured the downsides of this out 50 years ago, how much money our shareholders would now have uh, wow. instead is invested and buried in landfills. And, you know, a more recent number I've heard just uh, from the aluminum industry is they say we bury enough aluminum every year to make 25,000 jetliners. Holy Toledo. That's a lot of money and a lot of energy uh, being socked away in landfills. And it's one of the reasons some people are talking seriously about having someday to go in and mine our landfill. That's so interesting. You know, Neil, besides the United States, when you, you know, it's one thing to take a national view of sustainability, but when you take a world view, where are we in comparison to Europe or Asia, such as countries like Japan? Yeah. We're, we're, we're not in the leadership position where we've been so accustomed to be on everything else uh, for the last uh, couple of hundred years. You know, we've had this mindset that we're, that we're a land of plenty, which uh, other countries haven't had, and so we've been a little more lackadaisical in uh, not moving aggressively to some of these uh, new renewable and uh, you know, other types of people, planet, profit, the business models, as other countries who have from the get-go almost realized uh, that because they weren't as blessed as we were, they had to be more careful in what they did with their resources mm. and with their land. Got it. You so, know... Yeah, that's going to become a differentiator between and among countries, uh, and it already is becoming that way. And if we're not careful, we're going to find ourselves uh, second or third place. You know, for our listeners who are just turning in, we're we're so excited and honored to have Dr. Neil Drobny on from Ohio State. He's the director uh, of uh, you know he teaches both business and sustainability. He's the director of the whole program over there in terms of environment, economy, and uh, sustainability. I want you to go to Neil's website when you have a chance at at Ohio State. It is just wonderful, and it explains all the great things that he's touching on over there. It's www.eeds.osu.edu backslash. And, um, you know, Neil, when it comes to sustainability, you do such a great job of weaving the importance of sustainability um, with also business, um, can you please share your thoughts on uh, sustainability and, and business, and is it too late? And when is the best time for businesses to start making moves in the right direction? But it's definitely uh, not too late. I mean, it's never too late to try to, uh, right. to solve major problems. And almost the best time is, uh, is when you're starting a business, uh, before you build hmm. bad habits and adopt, uh, you know, classical business as usual practices start out on the right foot. Of course, uh, you know, most of our economy is built around existing businesses, and there it's culture change, and that's difficult to pull off. One of the things you, I tell my students is really important is that the, the leadership come from the top in doing something uh, like that. And an iconic example I, I bring to their attention is the late Ray Anderson and what he did mm. at Interface Carpets turn that business around and he framed this metaphor that he promoted to his company uh, meeting after meeting after meeting that they had to climb this new mountain called Mount Sustainability mm. and they're making great progress others are beginning beginning to copy them but that's much more successful model than that the CEO delegates the task to someone else to execute on his or her behalf he he, um, he is just you know, when you bring up Ray Anderson, he's been a guest of our sh- us on our, on Green is Good, and what a great example, uh, uh, you know, really of a guy who broke through and was an icon in this whole issue of sustainability and, and, and good business practices. I mean, Ray Anderson truly is uh, a great leader when it comes to all those issues. Right, sure is. Um, you know, you were, 
you've worn so many hats as we touched on at the top of the show, Neil. And uh, you know, you're, and then you evolved in terms of your business relationships into an environmental consultant. How did that lead, though, to teaching sustainability? And I've been, you know, I've been honored to be invited to speak in front of your class and lecture. Your students are some of the most engaged and interested young people I've ever met. So, ex- and it's a, and it's totally a charge. And I could see how it's so enjoyable. But how do you even get in that position? And how did you get to teach? Well, I, I just proposed uh, to the Fisher uh, College of Business at Ohio State that they engage me, and, uh, you know, one of their questions was, well, you know, are there schools doing this? So I gave them the list of schools that were doing it, and, uh, you know, this was almost 10 years ago. Wow. And they said, well, give it a try, uh, and the try went well, so I got to do it again, and... Uh, you know, for me, the motivation was that, you know, I could have greater impact by working with the next generation of leaders You're right. than by working with the existing generation, helping them to clean up one mess after another. So, and it was a very, very refreshing change. It gives one a great sense of impact to be talking with uh, the next generation of leaders. And, uh, and I've been doing this for some 10 years. I've been getting feedback from students about how their courses, uh, how my courses change their career direction, and they share with me the impact they're having now. So it gives one a great sense of legacy to have the opportunities to, to do what I'm doing at Ohio State. Talk about, though, what I want to hear, and I want to our listeners would love to hear, is talk about the first class you taught in 2004. Oh, well, half the students took it because it fit their schedule. Right. Because I was a newbie. Right. Given the time slot of 6 to 10 at night, once a week. <laughs> and these are the students, most of them had worked all day long. Yeah. They come into my class, and uh, privately they shared with me that several other faculty had advised them not to take the course because it wouldn't do anything for their resume or their career. Oh, wow. But by the end of the course, they were writing letters. Uh, to the dean saying this ought to be a core course, it ought to be required, and you ought to do more of it. And about how many students were there for uh, that first I had about 20 in that first class. So now walk me through the last class that you're in right now in two, the spring of 2013 and the fall of 2012. How many students, how engaged, explain the, the you know, show us the whole spectrum now. Yeah, I've got 28 now, right. but the real growth is next year with the new major, yeah. I'm approaching 80. Wow. And the second section. Wow. And it's just, uh, you know, just exploding. So I'm really going to have to change how I teach. I mean, I, it was almost a seminar before. Right. And now with large classes, even two sections with 40 each. Um <laughs> Not every student will get to ask every question, like has been the case up to now. And it's now it's a, a, a major at, at Ohio State, correct? Right, 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 and that's what's caused the growth. And the, if folks in this undergraduate major can go down one of four pathways, uh, one of which is a business-focused pathway, and about half of them have se- selected to go down the business pathway. You know, and you said something earlier, and it was subtle, but I want you to repeat it again, Neil, for our listeners. You're finding that a lot of your students, you're saying, really, when they're picking a company to go work for after, you know, as they get ready for postgraduate life, that they're very concerned about the company's sustainability practices. Oh, yes. they. Uh, that's one of the questions they ask every recruiter, and if the recruiter says, well, I'm not sure what our sustainability agenda is, I'll get back to you, they kind of walk away and they go to another company because most companies have sustainability programs in place. And when they find a student who's had some training, right. like we're providing, the recruiter's eyes really light up. That is so interesting. One student go to uh, uh, on a finance uh, internship to a major uh, corporation a year or so ago. Yeah. And a week after he was there, they learned he had some sustainability training. So they said, look, we've got dozens of finance interns. We have nobody with sustainability training. We're going to put you on a renewable energy project. So uh, the appetite uh, in the employer sector is just huge for these students. 
That is so, I mean, obviously the word's gotten around because with it, with your incoming class of 80, I mean, it, that just sounds like they're beating down the walls to get in, into this new major. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, we've had many folks who are seniors now, too late to start a new major, sort of say, boy, if you had been around when I was a sophomore, that's the major I would have been in. Wow. And so to uh, kind of uh, address that, we have under uh, consideration uh, starting a master's program in a few years. This has to feel so good, though. Your journey of the last 10 years, to see it start to culminate the way it is now and evolve the way it is, it's got to feel so satisfying for you. Yeah, it really does. It, uh... That's so exciting. You know, Neil, I know you're a humble man. But please share with our listeners the, the, the amazing awards that you have just won recently with regards to Enviance and the, the national champion now that the, your, your Ohio State Sustainability Program has. Please share what this means and what, and what the awards are that you just won. Yeah, this is a, the news is only a week old, but there's <laughs> been a tournament uh, sponsored by Enviance over the last several months. It was called the Environmental March Madness, patterned after the basketball tournament. Right. And they asked uh, universities uh, around the country to submit information about their undergraduate uh, programs and their campus sustainability initiatives. And first they announced uh, the first 16 winners. They called it the uh, Environmental 16 or something, something like that. And then they... Uh, uh, released a list of the environmental eight and we competed last year and finished in the environmental eight well this year we got to the final four and uh a week ago found out we were the selected uh, national champion wow so i get to go to a uh, users conference that uh, endiance is holding next week in san diego wow and uh, pick up an award check for Ohio State in the amount of five thousand dollars. Wow! And to talk to the uh, audience, be several hundred people from all over the world there uh, about Ohio State's program and the uh, success we're having. And uh, we're really pleased to be able to do that, and really thank Enviance for uh, setting the stage uh, for us to do so. That is just wonderful news, and congratulations. I mean, you deserve it so much. Yeah, thank you. I mean, that is just, uh, and, I, and I just know your program is going to continue to grow. And we're down to the last couple of minutes, Neil. And can you just share with our listeners some of your thoughts on the future trends of sustainability? Um, because I know everyone wants to always get a little glimpse into where we're going. Yeah, well, I think, uh, pick up on my earlier comments about sustainability needing system-type solutions. We have to think more broadly about, you know, how we're pursuing sustainability in business, in our communities. We just can't build one-off projects and do one-off initiatives. And there's this uh, recognition that the collaboration between uh, even competitors uh, needs to be uh, cranked up a notch or two. Uh, we have to work with our supply chains because most companies, their, their biggest footprint is not within the confines of their individual manufacturing plant, but it's in the supply chain. It's all the companies from whom they buy and their buyers buy stuff. Right. right back to, uh, you know, where raw materials are, are dug up or harvested. And so we have to take this life cycle uh, view of things, and then we have to button the loop up. We've got to discard this take-make-waste model and move towards what people are calling a circular economy where the flows just continue to revolve uh, day after day, month after month, and year after year. And uh, that means, of course, as much reliance as possible on, on renewable resources. Hmm. Well, I, I just want to uh, congratulate you again, Neil, on all the great work you're doing. The, the years at Ohio State are paying off so, so much, not only in the awards you're getting, but in all the next generation that you're putting out there to start and run our companies and create a more sustainable and environmental country and planet. For our listeners out there and our parents out there who want to send their kids to one of the best programs in the United States, probably the world, it's www.eeds.osu.edu. 
You can see and read all about Dr. Neil Drobny. Dr. Neil Drobny, you are a visionary business and sustainability thought leader and truly living proof that green is good. Well, thank you, John, and for the uh, thank you for the chance to talk to your uh, listeners.